On day one, I spawned in as a diamond turtle. I was on a shoreline and knew as a turtle, the ocean was my home. Son, you have made it. Welcome to our home. I looked around and saw an entire civilization of sea creatures. Everything looks so peaceful and happy. Man, I want to live like this forever. Suddenly, the water started to change into green, poisoning all of us. Oh no, this water is being polluted too. Son, you must go now. We love you. I watched as my parents died in front of me. No! I only had five hearts, and they were depleting fast. So I swam as fast as I could to the surface to catch my breath. Wait, who's that? And are those machines dumping a bunch of waste in the ocean? Yes, my operation is going just as planned. Soon I, Mr. Pigsley, will become the richest man in Minecraft. Hey, what are you doing? Oh my, is that a diamond turtle? You must be worth a fortune. The man immediately got in a boat and started to chase after me. <laughs> this ocean is nothing but a junkyard for my mission. All I care about is being rich. And when I capture you, we're diamond turtle. I'll be richer than ever. On day two, I was swimming as fast as I could with the boat right on my tail. I quickly noticed that the water around me was clearing up. Time to go under. I was successfully able to go underwater and lose Mr. Bigsley. Okay, that was too close. I can't believe my family is gone. What am I supposed to do now? I then noticed the ground was rising up. Am I reaching land? I swam up and saw a small island with nothing but sugar cane. Oh man, I'm hungry. I quickly grabbed some to help return my strength when- Hey, that's my sugar. I heard a loud rumbling and turned around to see a giant torch quickly approaching me. Oh, I'm sorry. I was just... The tortoise shot a water attack though, and I barely dodged it. Hey! He charged in and kept attacking me. Since I was a baby turtle, I used my size to my advantage, dodging all of his attacks. I then built up my strength and hit him on the head. Oh! My apologies. I just realized that you're the diamond turtle. Yeah? You know who I am? Of course. Diamond Turtle is meant to be the savior to all creatures by stopping Mr. Bigsley. He's a billionaire whose greed for diamonds led to the invention of the most dangerous mining machines. The waste these machines create is slowly killing all of us. There are five different diamond temples scattered throughout the world that shall upgrade you to your final form. It's up to you, Turtle, to stop this. Up to me? The tortoise introduced himself as Jenkins and handed me a map that would lead me to the first temple. Are you sure I'm the one who's meant to stop all of this? I'm just a turtle. Jenkins told me to shut up and to stay here for the night to regain my strength. Be out! by the morning. The next day, I swam over to a new shore after leaving the island and found myself in the middle of a desert. All right, Diamond Turtle, I guess I need to find the first temple. I noticed the single tree and was able to craft myself a set of wooden tools. Using a nearby cave, I was able to upgrade them to stone, the perfect gear for temple hunting. I was on my way to the first temple, but the heat from the desert was beaming down onto me. Oh man, it is hot. I needed to find some water and fast. I quickly spotted a pond nearby and jumped in but started to take damage. Ah! Even the ponds are polluted too? Man, maybe more of this world was polluted than I thought. Suddenly, a rich-looking raccoon approached me. So, you're this diamond turtle that Mr. Bigsley told me about. I see you think this water is disgusting, but I find it delightful. The raccoon then picked up a block and shot it at me. Thankfully, I was able to dodge it. You're coming with old Vito. I'll deliver you to Mr. Bigsley and in return, he'll grant me the world's filth and pollution, just as raccoons like it. He started shooting at me again with any block he could find and was able to hit me. I tried to do everything to fight back, but with no upgrades, I had a severe disadvantage. Yeah, man, pick on someone your own size. A rabbit jumped in and started to fight off the raccoon. He was extremely fast and used this to his advantage, ultimately leading to the raccoon running away. Hey, thanks for the save. Chapa, don't worry about it. I don't like bullies. It's nice to see another friendly face around here. The name's Rod. Nice to meet you, Rod. I'm Fozo. On day four, Rod and I's friendship quickly developed, and we decided to stick together. We were continuing to follow the map to the first of six temples when we approached an entrance to an old mine shaft. Oh no, this place looked a little scary. John, what's so 
scary, man. Come on. We'll be fine, huh? We walked through until we noticed a small railroad system with a couple of mine carts. This is where the map ends. I'm not so sure about this. But deep down, I knew I had no other choice. I got in the mine cart with Rod, and they slowly started to go forward. Uh, did I say slowly? It was going faster and faster every second I was in it. Is it supposed to go this fast? Sure, come on, man. Rod spoke too soon, though, because I noticed the head of the railroad system. There was a huge hole in the middle of it. I don't think that's supposed to be there. Me neither. Ah! Ah! Okay, that was close. Do you think the temple is down there? Only one way to find out. Wait, no. Ah! Ah! Thank goodness there was a pool of water here. Wait, what is this place? After a second glance, I realized that I was in the first temple. This place was awesome. I looked over and saw a diamond-looking apple sitting on a pillar. I'm guessing this is what I was after. I climbed up and ate the diamond apple, which upgraded me to my second form. I gained five more hearts and grew in size. I also had a new ability called the diamond punch? Sweet! I noticed there was a passageway that was blocked, so using my new diamond punch ability, I was able to punch, blowing up the entire entrance. Cha, there you are! Looks like you've gotten stronger there, pal. I'm happy for you. Thanks, Rod, and never push me down a dark and scary hole again. Rod agreed, and we both left the cave. As we were exiting, we stumbled across a large swamp oasis. You know what? I think I just came up with an idea. On day five, Rod and I got to work, building up our new home homes. I would build while Rod went out to gather materials. This is one body of water that Mr. Bigsley won't affect. I want this to serve as a safe haven for all animals out there, especially the sea creatures. I swam back to the shore to collect some seeds for a food source. With those, we were able to build up a nice small farm for ourselves. I even made an underwater kelp farm. Turtles love kelp. Cha, this is sick, man. You know, it's nice spending time with someone else. I haven't since. Since what? Well, let's with all this pollution spreading, I got split up with my family. Believe it or not, I really got a lot of friends. Hey, you know, you're my friend. And don't worry, I'm gonna help you find your family. I then heard a large commotion coming from the other side of a nearby hill. Oh no, what can that be? I arrived at a village, and from the looks of things, it wasn't doing so good. Families were there, all looking sad and scared. As I was looking, I suddenly heard mutters coming from behind me. Oi, um tired of this hey is everything all right i am tired of this oh! the villagers started to attack me hey stop he didn't listen though and kept punching i did my best to dodge him but he was crazy i stepped back and knocked him on the head with my diamond punch oh uh, i'm so sorry i don't know what came over me my vision became blurry after eating that rotten polluted food i'm tired of it i looked over and noticed that all of their crops were polluted why would you guys eat this we have no other choice mr bigsley's pollution has ruined farms and crops for villages all over Minecraft. We can't survive like this. Yeah, no kidding. I then noticed a weaponsmith that seemed to be really sad. Hey, are you okay? Me? No, there's no materials left to mine. The billionaire has taken it all. Inside, the cave was completely barren of any resources. An evil millionaire is using the materials to build up machines. They grant him resources, making him richer and richer, and damaging the world with pollution. The more he uses that's not good. We need to find the next diamond temple. Temple? You don't mean the one up in the mountain south of here. It's not that far. What is that? The weaponsmith told me he wasn't sure. Don't worry. I'll find out soon enough. I reached the laser blast on day eight, and what was waiting for me was much worse. It was a machine that seemed to be aiming to a mountainside. Every time it shot, it blew a massive hole in the world, consuming all of its materials. This has to be him. Who, me? Of course it is, you turtle. Word has quickly spread that you are trying to stop me in my plan. Yeah, because you're insane. You killed my parents. You've killed countless animals all because you only care about yourself. Don't you see what you're doing? That's enough out of you. His machine was then pointed straight at me. A blast beamed out, but thankfully, I was able to avoid it. I ran up and used my new diamond punch ability to greatly hurt the billionaire, but he shot his machine again, and this time, it hit. I was low and knew that I needed to leave. Before, I wanted you for your diamond. 
But after learning your plans, I just want you dead! Before Mr. Bigsley could strike again, I jumped in the river and quickly swam away from him as fast as I could. Soon enough, I realized this water was also polluted too, causing my hearts to drain even more. As they were depleting, I noticed a mountain similar to the one the weaponsmith described to me. I think I just found where the second temple is. On days 9 to 10, I made my way up the mountain, only to be greeted by a blocked entry. This has temple written all over over it. After some searching, I was able to find a lever contraption that opened up to the main gates. This one looked a lot different than the last. I noticed that there was a hole in the middle of it, so I quickly jumped in, only to be greeted by a room full of polluted water. That's when I saw the diamond apple on the opposite side of it. The only way I can get it is to swim through this? Ugh. Okay, Fozo. Here goes nothing! I jumped inside, immediately starting to take damage. Oh, gosh. I knew I had to keep going, but but I felt more and more weak. Ugh. My vision was starting to get blurry, but I suddenly got a vision. I was in clear waters again, and my parents were standing in front of me. Mom! Dad! Listen, son. It is you who is meant to fix all of this. Your diamond will shine brighter than the sun one day. You will see. Suddenly, my vision became clear again, and I was at the other end of the polluted hallway. I ate the second diamond apple, and suddenly my hearts turned into diamond hearts. I also had 15 now, and... Wait a minute, am I standing now? Uh, this is weird. Because of my diamond hearts, I took way less damage swimming through the polluted waters. Woohoo! I was walking back to base, which felt so strange. On the way back, though, I saw a dolphin lying across the beach. Oh boy, looks like I'm having dolphin for lunch today. Get him, boys! Not if I have anything to say about it. I blocked the crab from the dolphin, and he tried to attack me with his giant claws. Luckily, my diamond shell protected me. I punched the crab and knocked him back. Ow! A turtle that punches and is diamond? Can stand? I'm out of here. This guy's a freak. Yeah, that's right. Once the crab was out of sight, I turned back to the dolphin and checked on him. He seemed extremely sad and weak. Thanks for the save. The name's Flipper. I used to live on these waters, but they're too polluted to swim in. Now I have nowhere else to go. Hey, don't worry. I think I have the perfect place that you would like. On days 13 to 14, I got to work making Flipper a new home. I gathered more resources and put Flipper's house right under the water next to mine. Oh boy, let me tell you, it feels amazing to be under clean water again. Thanks, pal. No worries. I then swam out of the water, only to see Rod charging at me. Hey, 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 ow! Chad, dude, thank goodness you're okay, man. I was like starting to get really worried and stuff, and I was like asking around if they seen you and stuff, and wait, are you standing? Um, it's a long story. The dolphin swam up and said he's heard many things about Mr. Bigsley. You have? Is there anything worth sharing with us? The only thing I can think of is his nearby mining outpost. He's been using it a lot recently to strip the world in that area. The dolphin told me where to head off, and I thanked him. I made my way out. Before I reached the location, I went into a nearby cave, knowing it was best to better protect myself. I mined any iron I can find and used it to upgrade my tools to iron tools. I even was able to make myself an iron helmet. All right, time to find out how to stop Mr. Bigsley's plans. On days 15 to 16, I was led to a giant hole on the side of a mountain and can see minecarts inside. This hole looks like the work of Mr. Bigsley's machine. I could hear the sound of mining and ventured further to see creepers mining all of the material using their explosive abilities. Keep mining, guys. We need these resources to make Mr. Bigsley more machines. We don't want to make him angry. Hey, those materials don't belong to you. It's a diamond turtle. If we grab him, Mr. Bigsley's gonna reward us. Uh-oh. I had no choice but to fend off my attackers. I used my new diamond punch to take the first one down. Good. I think I've got a chance. Ow! I got hit, and the damage took away some of my hearts. I sped around the mobs and tried my best to avoid their attacks. Eventually, I was finally able to take them all down. Man, that was close. Well, at least I'm safe now and- ah! Ugh! Oh, man, I've really got to stop falling through holes. Hey, what's this? There was a map on the ground, and it showed me the location to Mr. Bigsley's lab. Maybe if I go there, I'll find a way to stop his pollution for good. I found a way out of the room and stumbled into one more creeper. 
Mr. Bigsley wanted me to make sure no one was snooping around his business. Bye-bye! No! I ran away and barely avoided the creeper's explosion. I definitely can't handle more of these guys around without any more upgrades. I needed to find another temple first. On days 17 to 18, I made it back to base, and Rod and I harvested the wheat from our farm and made some bread with it. There's not much wheat left, man. We're gonna have to find more crops. You're right, but we can't find any around here because of the pollution. The two of us decided to venture out and try to find more food. While on our trip, we noticed that more of the world was being affected by Mr. Bigsley's pollution. This is so messed up, man. I know. I have to stop this before Mr. Bigsley turns everything into a wasteland. Hey, over here. We looked over and saw a squirrel outside of a wooden shelter. You guys need to be careful around here. Red Wing owns these guys. Red Wing? The squirrel's name was Chip, and he was trying to keep the forest animals safe from Mr. Bigsley. Yeah. Red Wing is a giant hawk that plays on small animals like us. If you need a place to hide, you're more than welcome to stay here. You know, Rod, maybe it is a good idea to stay here for the night. Cha! Sure. Nonsense, Fozo. We've got no time to lose. Okay, we'll just keep in mind to watch out for Red Wing. The two of us continued looking for food until... Oh no, we have company. We try to run under the forest. If this was Red Wing, we knew we were in trouble. Before we could fully hide, a hawk with large red wings landed. You must be the diamond turtle everyone's been talking about. You're coming with me to Mr. Bigsley. Wait, why are you working with him? You know he's destroying the world, right? Foolish turtle. I'm trying to save my people. If I help Mr. Bigsley, he promised to not pollute the climate I live in. So you're coming with me. Rod, run! The two of us bolted away from the hawk and tried to lose him. Red Wing, though, immediately flew up into the sky and started tailing us. Uh, come on. We can lose him in the trees. I managed to get under one, and Rod was right behind me. But Red Wing was too fast and managed to catch him. Hey, let go of my friend. I ran over to him and hit him with my diamond punch, but he was unaffected and easily knocked me away. Cha, get your claws off of me, man! If you want your friend back, then you'll turn yourself over to Mr. Bigsley, Diamond Turtle! Red Wing was leaving with my friend, and I was too weak to stop him. Don't worry, Rod. I'll come get you. I promise. On days 21 and 23, I knew that I needed more information on Red Wing, so I returned to Chip's shelter. Chip! Chip! It's you! I went inside and saw that it was full of animals. There was even a small pond that had sea creatures. This is terrible, Chip. It's all thanks to Mr. Bigsley and now Red Wing. He used to be the protector of the forest, but now he's Mr. Bigsley's enforcer. He's desperate to save the other hawks. I asked him if there was any way to stop Red Wing, but he didn't know. I guess the only way to beat him was to find the next diamond temple. Oh, yeah. I've heard many things about them. The closest one from here is the one over by the volcano. Chip gave me the location, and I was excited to find that the next temple wasn't far from here. I was about to head off, but I looked over at the other animals inside. I can tell that they were very weak and dying. Chip, why don't you and the other animals head over to my base and stay there, okay? This place isn't ideal for you guys. I vowed to have a safe place for animals, and that included them. On days 24 to 26, I reached the volcanic area and noticed that there were holes everywhere. Mr. Bigsley must have been here collecting resources and polluting the area. If I'm not careful, this entire volcano could collapse. I looked around it and noticed iron ore alongside it. I quickly mined up any iron that I can find and was able to finish off my iron armor set. I continued upwards and noticed an entrance at the top. Maybe that's where the diamond temple is. Just then, clouds started to form in the sky. Oh my goodness. Perfect. It's finally gonna rain water. Ah, ow, ow. The rain wasn't pouring water, but instead it was burning me. Acid rain? That's no good. I started to lose heart and fast. Ah, I need to find some cover. I ran to the side of the volcano. Oh, that was too close. It's too dangerous outside to go up the volcano, but I need to get to that temple. I know. I pulled out my iron pickaxe and started mining my way through. On days 27 to 29, I finally saw an opening and reached a higher area of the volcano. There, the third diamond temple was waiting for
waiting for me. I walked inside and found a spot that was holding the diamond apple. I went over and ate it and felt much stronger than before. I had 20 hearts now and acquired a cool diamond blast. Sweet. This is going to come in handy. I made my way out of the temple until I was confronted by Vito. Ah, uh, Mr. Bigsley was right. There are diamond temples all around the world. How did you find this place? Eh, that doesn't matter. Mr. Bigsley is gonna have this temple, and I'm gonna bring him your diamond shell. Ooh. The raccoon shot his weapon at me, and I quickly avoided the block. I ran up to him and used my diamond to push him back. The punch, though, did no damage, and the raccoon managed to throw a block at me. Ouch! Try this on for size. I used my new diamond blast, but was only able to stun him. What? I still can't beat this guy? I made a break for my tunnel and escaped through there. I returned to base to get some more food and saw that Chip and the other animals had made it. Chip, it's good to see you guys here. Yeah, but where are we supposed to sleep? Oh, um, you do need some homes to stay in. I quickly went around the swamp and collected a bunch of materials. Then I built several homes for my forest animals. I even built a small little tree house for Chip. I expanded underwater and built several homes around me and Flipper's houses too. Thanks, Bozo. You really helped us out. I don't know about that. I looked over at the farm and knew that it wasn't gonna be enough to feed everyone here. I also noticed that some of the crops were getting contaminated by the polluted water. I can't let them eat all of these. It would kill them. I need to find a way to undo this pollution. Wait a minute. Maybe? I used my diamond blast on the farm and the water turned back to normal. Oh, that was amazing. It's still not enough to keep it clean long term. I need to find the other temples. I knew deep down, though, if Rod saw this, he would be stoked. I miss my friend. I pulled out the map that showed Mr. Bigsley's location. It's time to go save him and be brave just as he would be for me. On days 33 to 35, I followed the map when I spotted Red Wing surveying the skies. Oh no, I hid under a tree and watched him fly away from the area. You know, maybe he could lead me to Rod. I quietly followed right behind Red Wing until he flew inside of a large building. What is this place? I reached it and knew that this had to be Mr. Bigsley's mansion. It looked like an entire operation was going down here. I went in and found Rod was trapped inside of a cave. Rod, it's so good to see you. I told you that I'd come back. Chomp, I never doubted you for a minute, man. <laughs> Just, uh, can you get me out of here? I walked over to Rod's cage when Red Wing flew down in front of me. You're not going anywhere. The Hawks tried to scratch me with his claws, but I used my diamond shell to protect me. I'm much stronger now. I then used my diamond to blast and hit Red Wing. Looks like I finally got competition. He tried to fly around and catch me off guard. He was able to fly by and hit me, taking away many hearts. Don't you understand, Red Wing? I'm doing this to save all animals. All I care about is my own. Then I'm sorry. The moment he swooped in, I perfectly timed another diamond blast, which caused him to be defeated. You could have been so much more, Red Wing. Uh, let's get out of here, Rod. You know, I overheard Mr. Bigsley say that he's creating a giant machine. One bigger than the rest. If he does this, who knows how bad the pollution will get. This is bad. Cha, real bad things are getting a lot worse, buddy. Because of Bigsley's pollution, I heard that my old home is almost inhabitable now. I think my family's still there. I don't want them to die, Fozo. Memories of my family dying began to flood my mind. Don't worry, Rod. I won't let your family suffer the same fate mine did. We searched around the mansion and managed to find a bunch of seeds and a water purifier. With this, it should help us keep the oasis clean and solve our water problems for now. Rod and I were on our way to his family when we spotted Vito nearby. That raccoon was polluting more of the world. Soon, my trash paradise will come into existence. Listen, you don't have to side with Mr. Bigsley, okay? We can all find another way. Find another way? There is no other way. When I was young and alone, nobody wanted to be around me. Everyone called me filthy and thought I'd be better off dead. Mr. Bigsley was the only one who thought of me as useful. I shall make sure his vision for this world world comes true. No, you won't. I shot Vito with my diamond blast, stunning the raccoon. 
It is too late, Fozo. You still have no idea what he has planned. Let's keep going, Rod. We journeyed into the forest, and the place was devastated. Most of the trees were dead, and the ground was destroyed by pollution. Wait, Dad? Rod ran over to his parents, and his father looked extremely weak. Oh, Rod, thank goodness you're okay. Your dad is sick, and I don't know if he's gonna make it. I threw him some bread. Here, try to eat this. He ate some and gained a bit of energy. This forest forest is way too contaminated for you to live in. Come stay at the oasis with me and your son. And I promise someday this land will be restored again. On days 39 to 41, I let Rod take his family back to my base. While he did that, I searched for a way to heal his father. I eventually found a village and went inside to see that the villagers were all sad. What's wrong? The polluted waters has ruined all of our crops. If we can't reverse this, we'll all die of starvation. I think I may be able to help you with that. I went over to the villager's farm and shot my diamond blast at it, turning the crops back to normal. You did it! Now we won't have to starve anymore! <laughs> Do you hear that, Henry? We are saved! <laughs> Here, diamond turtle, take this as gratitude from all villagers around the world! The villager dropped a bottle, and it was a potion of healing. Oh, wow! Thank you! I rushed back to base, and then gave Rod's dad the potion. He drank it, and was immediately cured of his sickness. Thank you, Fozo. Cha, dad! Thank goodness you're okay! Using some leftover materials, I built Rod's parents a nice wooden home next to Rod's. With all these animals inhabiting the oasis, I decided to grow the farm and use the water purifier to keep expanding water throughout all of it and hopefully getting rid of the pollution. Ah! What was that? Rod and I decided to go over to see what was going on. We both followed the noise until we reached the cause of it. A large machine was using a laser to drill through the mountain. Animals ran away from it. What? If this goes on, it'll destroy the entire biome. I needed to do something. I tried to use my diamond punch on it, but it was too hard to break. I used my diamond blast to stun the laser, finally shutting it down. Cha, dude, you did it! But suddenly... The machine started to make a weird noise. Oh no. Run! We bolted and the machine exploded right behind us. Why would the machines do that? These machines are only getting worse and worse. I think I might know why. I heard that there was a lab underneath Mr. Bigsley's mansion. Maybe that's where he builds all of them. Thanks, Rod. Hopefully, I can get rid of them once I find them. On days 45 to 47, I reached the mansion and looked around for the underground lab. Eventually, I found an area that had a secret entrance. Once I opened it, I went down a set of stairs that took me to an area that was filled with large machines. With all of these, Mr. Bigsley can ruin the world in no time. I looked around at all of them until I spotted a valve on the wall. I hit the valve and it took me down an elevator to another room. Inside of it, there was a machine that looked a lot different than the others. It was enormous and I can tell that it wasn't fully built yet. I think this is the one Rod was telling me about. If this was fully built, I don't think anyone will be able to stop Mr. Bigsley. I continued investigating the lab until I saw a cage that was holding a chicken. And not just any ordinary chicken, a golden one? A diamond turtle? Please, you gotta get me out of here, man. I'm Sonny and Mr. Bigsley's been using my golden eggs to get rich and power one of his machines. My goodness. I gotta destroy all of these machines and get you out of here. Make a sound and I guarantee you'll be captured in the blink of an eye. Get me out and I can help you find a better solution. I knew that Sonny was right. I broke him out of his cage and we quietly escaped the lab. We weren't that far from base when Sonny stopped me. Hey, what's wrong? Listen, Fuzzo, I really appreciate you getting me to safety, but I need to get back to my farm. Your farm? But if you do, then who knows if you'll get captured again? Sonny was afraid that Mr. Bigsley would go after his golden chicks now that he was gone. I can't lose my family to that maniac. They mean everything to me. Don't worry, okay? I'll go and rescue them. You need to remain safe, though. Head back to my oasis. He was skeptical, but I told him to trust me. He did, and we both went our separate ways. I reached the farm, and it was already under attack. There were more of those rich-looking creepers, and everything was on fire. Let's get this. 
chicks for Mr. Big Sleep. I don't think so. I charged in and used my diamond punch to knock the creepers out of the way. I then used my diamond blast to finish one off. The second creeper managed to hit me, but he didn't do much damage. I used my other diamond blast on him too and easily finished him. Now, come on. Where are those golden chicks? I ran inside of the farm and heard a noise. Oh my goodness. Thank goodness you guys are okay. You guys look so scared. Come on. Let's get you guys back to your dad. On days 51 to 53, I was at the base with the Golden Chicks and Sunny. Oh, my babies! I'm so glad you're all safe! It was good to see Sunny reunited with his family, and it made me miss my own a little bit. You know, maybe these animals in the Oasis are my new family, and I'm gonna do whatever it takes to protect them. I got to work building them a new home. I quickly gathered some materials outside of the base and made him and his family a large chicken pen. I know it's not the same as your farm, but at least it's safe. Thank you, Fizzo. This will definitely work for us. No problem. Now you guys get comfy. Because you saved my children, I think I may know where another one of those diamond temples are. You do? I've overheard things while being captured. Just be careful, Fizzo. Mr. Bigsley is onto your plans. I will be. Sonny gave me the location, and I immediately left the base. I reached the ocean that he mentioned, and just like my old home, it was completely polluted. The next diamond temple was under these waters, so I had no choice but to go down there. Maybe my diamond hearts could protect me from the pollution. I dived in and immediately took damage. I jumped out of the water and saw that half of my hearts were already gone. This pollution seems stronger than normal. There has to be another way to get down. Ow! I've never seen a diamond turtle before. A witch was behind me and was marveled by my appearance. You're trying to go down the ocean, right? You're going to need a special type of potion if you want to go down there. Would you mind making that potion for me? It's really urgent that I find the temple in this ocean. The witch agreed, but I would have to gather some ingredients for her to make. I will need some emeralds from the nearest village. And one last ingredient. What's the last ingredient? The witch pulled out a sword and sliced me. Ah! Ow! A sample of your blood. That should be it. Go! Get me the emeralds! I then made my way to the nearest village. I looked around in some chests and found five emeralds. You know, I think this should do. I made my way back to the witch hut and handed her them. So, what did you need this for again? Oh, nothing! I just hate villagers! <laughs> Anyways, here you go. The witch then threw me a potion of protection. You know, you lied to me, but at least you were useful. On days 57 to 59, I returned to the ocean shore and pulled out the potion of protection. This better work. I drank and jumped back into the ocean and I didn't take any damage. Nice. I continued swimming further down and the fourth diamond temple was within sight. Perfect. I reached the entrance and a group of drowned were standing in my way. We will not let you inside, diamond turtle. Mr. Bigsley has turned this water into a polluted utopia for drowned, allowing no players to explore this area. The drowned began to attack me, but underwater, I was too fast for them to catch up. I darted around and used my diamond punch to take down one by one. I defeated the last one and cleared the entrance to the diamond temple. I went inside and noticed that the water around wasn't polluted like it was on the outside. You know, maybe the diamonds inside of here kept the water clean. Huh. The diamond apple was on top of a pillar in the middle of the room, and I quickly took it. I now had 25 hearts and grew larger than my previous size. Now I could really tell that I was getting stronger, and I even acquired a new ability. I was able to summon diamond fangs out of the ground at will. Sweet. As I made my way back to the surface, I started to take damage and lose hearts. Oh no, the potion's starting to wear off. I swam as fast as I could and jumped out of the water. Phew. I need to get some food and regain gain my strength. I returned to base and refilled my hunger bars from eating our crops. Oh no, I was so blinded by my hunger that I ate most of our food. Oh, I still had the seeds that I took from Mr. Bigsley's mansion. I added carrots, beets, and pumpkins to the farm and also increased its size. Now, everyone should have a good amount of food. Ha! <sighs> It's good to see that the base was coming along nicely. Cha, Fozo! Looking good, buddy! Thanks, Rod. Cha, you know, I think we should add more homes to this place. It's, uh, starting to get overrun by animals. I agreed. The both of us collected more resources around the swamp, and I built more houses along the shore and underwater. I knew that more animals would eventually live here until I defeated Mr. Bigsley. Once I find that last temple, I'll stop that billionaire right in his tracks. On day 63 to 65, I headed out in search for more food and any information on the fifth diamond temple. I reached the jungle 
and it looked like the effects of Mr. Bigsley's pollution had reached this area too. Most of the trees have died, and I couldn't find any animals around anywhere. It was like a ghost town. I knew that I needed to find the next temple, but where do I even start? Then, I remember Jenkins back on his island. He knew all about the temples. Maybe I could ask him. I went over to the shore, and the water there was too polluted to swim in. No way am I gonna make it across in one piece. If I can't swim across the water, then I'm gonna have to sail across. I went over to some trees and used my iron axe to chop them down. I then dropped the crafting table and got to work building my incredible ship. Or just the regular boat. All right, Jenkins, here I come. Oh no, the island has completely changed since the first time I was here. Everything on the land was dead, and even the sugarcane farm was ruined. Jenkins? Jenkins! I couldn't find him anywhere. No, no! The pollution got to him too. Now what am I supposed to do? While I was devastated, something caught my eye. There was a piece of sugar left on the ground, and it didn't seem poisoned. I decided to go ahead and pick the sugar up. Once I did, there was was a large flash and I was on the island, but it was entirely clean now. Hello, Fozo. Jenkins, you're alive. Where are we? Are we in some kind of vision? Ow! Of course this is a vision, you idiot. And no, I'm dead. The pollution got me. I'm so sorry. I should have come back and checked on you. Oh, don't be sad, Fozo. My journey has passed. Yours is far from over. You've made a lot of progress since the last time we met, and it's time you find the final temple. I think they should know where to look. I turned around, and my parents were standing behind us. Mom! Dad! Hello, son. We're so proud of you. We knew you were destined for great things. Go to the Badlands near your oasis. That's where you'll find the temple. Good luck, son. We love you. The vision ended, and I was back on the polluted island. Thanks, guys. I promise to make this world right again. On days 69 to 71, I returned to base to find that it was completely destroyed. Wait, what happened? No! The oasis was ruined, and the animals were all scared and hurt. Rod, what happened here? It was Mr. Bigsley, man. His machines came through here and totally wrecked the place. That monster! Get ruined! ruined our home. This place was supposed to be a safe haven for everyone. And now look at it. We need to build it back up and make it stronger than it ever was before. Rod and I quickly got to work rebuilding the base and fixing all of the animals' homes. They were supposed to feel safe here. And I'm going to do what I can to make sure nothing ever happens to this place again. It took a couple days, but we both worked really hard in trying to make all of the animals happy again. After that, we decided to build a wall around the base for better protection. And there we go. That should do it. Even though the base was fixed, the animals were all still afraid. I can tell that they didn't feel safe. Everyone, please just calm down. I know you're all scared, but I'm going to make sure that this doesn't happen again. Oh, I think that was Mr. Bigley's machine. Come on, Fozo. I'm right behind you, Rod. We need to stop this now. We reached the machine's location, and it was even bigger than anything we've seen before. It was drilling a giant hole right through the ground. <laughs> That's right. Take all the resources and make me rich. Stop it right now, Mr. Bigsley. Diamond Turtle, I should have known you'd come here. Well, you're too late. If this keeps up, Fozo, it'll permanently damage the entire world. We have to stop it now. I know. The two of us ran over to the laser, and Mr. Bigsley pulled out a weapon to try and shoot us. We dodged the attack, but he was blocking our path. Fozo, you're too slow to stop that machine. I'll go do it. Wait, no, Rod. It's too dangerous. Rod removed the laser, shutting it off for a moment, but it was suddenly malfunctioning. Uh, it's gonna blow. Rod, get out of there. Tell my family I love them, Fozo. It's been one heck of a ride. Rod, no. The machine exploded, sending both me and Mr. Bigsley flying and separate directions. On days 75 to 77, I woke up and found myself in the middle of a plains biome. Ow, my head. What happened? Rod? Rod! I looked around and I couldn't find him anywhere. No, Rod, you were the best friend that I could have ever asked for. I'll make sure the entire world knows that. I looked around and also noticed that Mr. Bigsley was nowhere to be found. He must have escaped. I returned to base and Rod's parents were outside waiting for me. Fozo? Where's Rod? He, um... Where 
is our son. I'm sorry, but Rod is gone. No, our son. He sacrificed himself to save all the animals. And I swear, I'm going to avenge him and make Mr. Bigsley pay for his actions. Rod's parents were still upset, and I completely understood that. I was devastated losing my parents, and now another member of my family is gone. I built a memorial outside of Rod's home, and everyone in the Oasis took a moment to honor my friend. You're a hero, buddy, and I won't let your death be in vain. If I wanted to stop Mr. Bigsley and make sure no one suffered the same fate as Rod, I needed to find the final diamond temple. My dad said that it would be somewhere in the Badlands. I was crossing over a biome when I heard the sound of a familiar voice. Come on, you stupid machine. Work! It was Vito, and he was standing next to another machine from Mr. Bigsley. How does that billionaire expect a raccoon to run something like this? Vito, this needs to stop now. This is only getting started. Mr. The Bigsley is finishing up on his biggest machine yet! And oh my, is it a sight to see. Oh no, he won't. The two of us began our battle, and I quickly took advantage by stunning him with my diamond blast. I couldn't let him get in the machine. I then knocked the raccoon back with my diamond punch. He wasn't too happy about that, but I was confident in beating him. Vito tried to shoot me with his weapon, but I quickly dodged the attack. I then used my diamond fang ability on Vito, taking him down once and for all. Sorry, Vito, but your trash paradise isn't safe for everyone else. Hey, what's this? I picked up the map, and it gave me the location to Mr. Bigsley's operation site. Oh, no. Could he be building his final machine here? One that was bigger than the last? I need to stop him. On days 81 to 85, I reached the location, and Mr. Bigsley had a machine here that was bigger than any other I've ever seen. Surely this can destroy the entire world. I need to destroy it. I don't think so, Diamond Turtle. Mr. Bigsley landed in front of me and was now in some kind of mech suit. Because of you and that stupid rabbit, my mining has stalled, but that won't happen again. I charged in and tried hitting him with a diamond punch, but it was no good. He didn't take any damage. No one's going to stop me from becoming the richest man in Minecraft, and that includes you. He activated his suit and knocked me away. Ow! I dodged another attack and tried to counter with a diamond blast. Your weak diamond attacks won't work on me. Mr. Bigsley used the weapon from his mech suit and took more of my hearts away. He was too strong for me to fight, so I had no choice but to leave the area and escape. You coward! My machines are going to change the world! I continued my journey to finding the last temple until I finally reached it. I was still exhausted from my fight with Mr. Bigsley and needed the diamond apple to regain my strength. I entered and can see the diamond apple was at the end of the hall. I started walking there and noticed that part of the ceiling was falling right towards me. I jumped out of the way and avoided getting buried. Man, that was close. I then heard more of the ceiling coming down. I ran towards the apple and finally reached it unharmed. I guess this temple was booby trapped. I grabbed the apple and my body began to change again. I now had a total of 30 hearts and felt stronger than ever before. Even my diamond shell looked stronger. So this was my final form as the diamond turtle. I exited the temple and was surrounded by a group of more of the billionaire creepers. Here's the diamond turtle. Get him for Mr. Bigsley. A creeper rushed in and try to attack me, but my diamond skin was too hard for him to damage. I easily knocked him away with a diamond punch. Forget it! Let's just take him all at once! The creepers were all about to attack, and I could feel a new ability inside of me. I shot out a huge beam of diamond. Nice! This will definitely be useful. Suddenly, a beam of light shot up in the sky, and I knew that Mr. Bigsley had something to do with this. On my way towards the beam, I ran back into my base. I looked at all of the animals and they weren't in good shape. The pollution was getting worse and I was afraid that they wouldn't last much longer. Guys, don't give up now. All is not lost, okay? I'm going to head out and face Mr. Bigsley. Once he's defeated, I'm going to use my powers and purify the world. The animals were no longer down and they all began to cheer for me. You got this, Rozo? restore the world for what it should be. We all believe in you, Fozo. We know that you can do this. 
Thanks, everyone. I'll be back. I promise. I reached the beam of light and saw that the machine was now finally complete. Diamond Turtle, you're right on time to watch my new world unfold. Once I activate my machine, I shall strip all resources from this world at once, making me by far the richest man in existence. No! Mr. Bigsley activated it, though, and a huge laser began to drill a hole through the earth. It felt like an earthquake was happening all around me. Farewell, Diamond Turtle. <laughs> <laughs> that laser was gonna destroy everything. I needed to find a way to stop this thing. An idea popped into my mind. Okay, here goes nothing. I went over and used my diamond shell to reflect the beam back over to the machine. It sent a wave up into the sky, causing the entire machine to explode. Whoa. Thanks to my shell, the explosion not only destroyed the machine, but a wave emitted throughout the world, purifying it. No! Mr. Bigsley saw the outcome of the explosion and tried to flee the scene. I won't let you run away from this. On day 100, I chased after him and managed to corner him into a dead end. It's over, Mr. Bigsley. No. Everything that I've done is ruined because of you. Your greed for riches was destroying the entire world. I couldn't let that continue any longer. You blasted turtle. If I can't have the world's resources, then at least I'll have your diamond shell. In the blink of an eye, he summoned another mech suit and attacked. But my ultimate diamond form protected me. I used my diamond punch to knock him away. And I can tell that I was damaging his suit. I'm going to make you pay for everything you've done. I used my diamond blast to heavily damage his suit. No, this can't be how it ends. This is for Rod. I used my final upgrade and shot a beam of diamonds right at him, causing his mech suit to explode. Mr. Bigsley was gone, and now the world can finally be safe from his pollution. On day one, I spawned in as the world's only lava penguin. I was in front of my father, who was the king of all of the penguins. My son, you are very special. When it is time, you shall be the one who takes the throne and rules over our entire kingdom of penguins, a land that only believes in peace and harmony. Be their king? Dad, I don't know if I have what it takes. Suddenly, my ice penguin brother, Mordecai, burst through the room. Him? A king? I'm the older brother. It should be me. Mordecai, you know nothing of peace. You have spoken your last sentence, father. Mordecai summoned his ice powers, which killed our father. Dad, no. You will pay for this. I charged in. As a lava penguin, I had a lava shot ability. I tried to use it on my older sibling and fight him, but he was far too strong. Do you ever think any penguin would look up to you, a lava penguin? Our father was a coward. It is time I start my rule over this kingdom and shape it the way it should be. I was so weak. Please stop. But with another hit, I was knocked out cold. I woke up and felt extremely cold. Brrr, I can't move. I looked around and realized I was prisoned inside of a glacier. Because of this, I was losing my heart. Oh no, how am I supposed to get out? Out of pure panic, I shot my lava ability, which caused all the ice around me to melt away. Phew, that was close. Out of nowhere though, a frozen blaze walked over. The prisoner is escaping. I was given orders by King Mordecai to keep you in this prison forever. You shall never visit the Penguin Kingdom again. The frozen blaze started to charge after me. Ah! Since I only had five hearts, I had to be careful. I tried to use my lava shot on the blaze, but it was doing absolutely nothing to him. Oh no, I need to run. I started to run as fast as I could, jumping from tree to tree. I had to lose this guy. Sadly, the blaze had a flight ability, which helped him keep up. You shall not leave. I hopped off and in front of me was a long large lava pool. Oh no, I'm trapped. I turned around and saw the frozen blaze was charging right after me. What am I gonna do now? Knowing I would be doomed either way, I decided to jump in the lava. On day three, I was swimming in lava. Ah! Wait a minute, am I healing? Don't worry, we shall catch you soon enough.
Using the lava, I went down under and started to swim away. Eventually, the tide brought me to an opening inside of a cave. Phew, that was too close. I was beginning to walk out when suddenly everything started to rumble around me. Oh no, what now? The rumbling got louder and louder until a weird looking orb poofed outside of me. Ah, who are you? Hello, penguin. The name's Lovey. Uh, were you there the whole time? Why, yes, I was. I am the last gift your dad gave you to help lead his people. Look, I don't know if I have what it takes, okay? I'm not sure if you know this, but penguins aren't really fans of lava. Oh, young one, your dad chose you for a reason. In time, you shall see. But first, you must master all of your powers by finding all five lava cores that exist in this world. They will help you control your lava. If that's the case, then I'll do what I can to find all the lava cores to grow stronger and stop my brother. Where do I start? First, you must be better prepared for the risks up ahead. Go out, find some materials, and make a set of starter tools. From there, you must find a nice area that suits, well, a lava penguin, like yourself. Then, build up a shelter, preferably one that won't burn down every time you touch it. <laughs> tools? Check. Shelter? Check. Perfect! Bozo, you don't know this now, but all penguins will need you before it's too late. Hurry! Quick! I think it's time I bring you to the first lava core. On day four, I was able to make it to the first lava core's location. It looked like it was some sort of fort area. I began to make my way in when I realized I wasn't alone. So what do we do when we find that lava penguin? Kill him. Word of his escape has spread and the king wants him dead. I tried my best to sneak through, but my lava skin set the nearby leaves on fire, causing my location to be revealed. Get him! The three frozen blazes started attacking me making it really hard to avoid their shots. I knew that I was far too weak to try and take them all on, but thankfully, I was able to take one down. I gotta get out of here. I started running and noticed lava was running along the walls. I swam up the lava flow and was able to escape just in time. As I got to the top, I came across the first lava core. Sweet. I quickly ran up and absorbed it. This caused me to grow into an adult-sized penguin. I even gained five more hearts. The frozen blazes then quickly caught up to me. Okay, time to fight. Since I was upgraded, I had a new ability that allowed me to summon a giant lava axe. I was now too strong for them, causing the remaining two frozen blazes to be defeated. Whoa, who knows what other upgrades I'm gonna get. After my victory, I was heading back towards home when I heard a loud roar. What in the world was that? There I was, with 50 ice golems staring me down, right? That's when I let out my lava roar and took them all out at once. Wow, mister. You must be extremely powerful then. Did you say you had a lava roar? Can I see it? Oh, hi there. You see, uh, it's kind of on cool down right now. <laughs> right. You wouldn't happen to know where any lava cores are, would you? I'm trying to get stronger myself. Wait a minute. That sounds like the call for adventure. I may know where to find a hint towards the second lava core, but uh, if you want it, you gotta let me tag along. Deal. Welcome to the team. It's my pleasure. The name's Bulk. Day six started off with me showing my newly found friend my home. It's not much, but it'll- It's perfect! Oh man, I need a home now. I went out to gather a few more resources. Once I brought them back, I was able to make the lava bear a little cave home of his own. Oh boy, thank you so much for letting me tag along. I've always wanted to be part of something bigger. Of course, us lava animals gotta stick together, right? So, you said you know where a hint towards the next upgrade would be? Oh, so like I totally have to reach out to my guy. Your guy? Yeah, my guy. I'll tell you when uh he gets back to me. I see you've made a new friend, Fozo. The name's Lobby. Uh, did this random orb thing just talk to me? It's a long story. We then all heard a loud commotion going on near us. What is that? I ran over, only to be met with a village that was being completely frozen over. <laughs> Please, leave us alone! Oh no, what is my brother doing to the world? You know the orders. Get all the food and fish you can find for the kingdom. They left the village completely barren. I need to help these people. I ran in and using my lava powers, I was able to free one of the villagers. Oh, thank you, weird red looking penguin. I thought I was done for. No worries. Here, take this and free the others. I need to follow these guys. I can't just let them get away with this. Oh! Hold still, Jerry! I'm trying to free you!
On day seven, I was following the frozen blazes. You know the drill. Put all the food away for King Mordecai. It looks like they led me straight to one of their hideouts. So, uh, do you agree with everything that's going on with the Penguin Kingdom? I don't know. Something seemed to be a little too harsh. This is how things are now. With everyone and everything under King Mordecai's control, no one can be free. It doesn't sound fair to the penguins. Life must be awful for them right now. Remember the mission. Find food and obtain the lava cores for the king. We can't let his brother get stronger. Wait, they might know where the second one is. Suddenly, the ice I was standing on started to melt away. It alerted them and gave away my position. With my new ability, I was slashing them with my axe, trying to take them down. Sadly, though, they were able to counter my attacks and greatly injure me. Ah, I need help. Hey, leave my pal alone. Bulk made an entrance by breaking through the walls and started attacking the frozen blazes. To my surprise, he was pretty strong. He was able to take all of them down. The last blaze dropped a map that would lead me straight to the next upgrade. See, just as I promised, a hint towards the next lava core. As we were leaving the area, we were able to spot some iron ore. Using my pickaxe, I mined enough to hopefully upgrade my tools. I placed my furnace down and quickly realized that I needed coal. Great. Oh, silly. I can heat those up for you. Wait, you can? Lavi then shrunk inside of the furnace, allowing all of my iron to smelt. With this, I was able to upgrade all of my tools into iron tools. Perfect. I see you're making great progress, Bozo. Hopefully you can take your rightful place as the king of the penguins. Yeah, right. As we were leaving the cave, I noticed Bulk standing over the horizon. Hey, are you okay? Who, me? Uh, yeah, yeah, of course I'm okay. I can easily tell, though, that he was lying. All right, all right, fine. Believe it or not, I, uh, I don't have a whole lot of friends. Most of these crazy stories I tell are made up to get uh, the people to like me. Look, all I'm trying to say is thanks for being my friend. Of course. And don't worry, Bulk. In time, you'll have a great story to tell. That actually happened, I promise. On days 9 to 10, I sent Bulk back to base while I went out to find the second core. The map led me to what looked like an ashen burnt mountain. At the top, I can tell that there was an entryway. I slowly but surely made my way to the top. Man, talk about a lot of stairs. As I made my way to the last step, the second lava core was there waiting for me. Perfect. I walked over and was about to pick it up when I was knocked out of the way. Ow! Oi, looks like we've got ourselves a tiny little problem here, lads. What the? Fire kangaroos? I then watched as the head kangaroo took the lava core. Hey, that's mine! No, it looks like it's mine, actually. With all this ice expansion going on, it's been harming our home. And it's because of your kind. The penguins. Listen, I need that upgrade. I want to stop all of this. The kangaroos didn't listen, though, and started to fight me. Ah, knock it off. I tried my best to fight back, but with their high jumps, they were able to dodge me. All we care about is our homeland. And if we have you, maybe we can make King Mordecai an offer. On days 11 to 12, I woke up only to find myself in yet another prison. Great. Well, look what mess you've gotten us into now. All right, all right. That's enough out of you. Lavi flew over next to the top of the bars, which made me realize the top blocks were made out of ice. Probably to stop the fire kangaroos from hopping out. Using my lava shot, I shot at the ice, melting it. I was able to then quickly swim out of my cell using the water. However, it did take some of my hearts away. Being made out of lava sucks sometimes. Once I reached above ground, I was met with their main camp area. Lots of kangaroos were hopping around, patrolling the area. And was that my brother? It's all I previously said. I have the lava penguin. I shall deliver him to you if you agree to not affect the climate of this land. We need heat here. <sighs> Yes, yes, I agree to your terms. Now bring me to my brother. Oh no. I quickly hid and watched as they walked to my previous cell that was now empty. What? It's empty? No, no, no. Well, I promise he was here. Oh, wasting my time, are you? That's it. Wait, no. Freeze the entire camp. Copy that. On 
On days 13 to 14, I looked around at the now all frozen kangaroo camp. All people that were here were now either killed or gone. How can I be related to Mordecai? He's pure evil. After a bit of searching, I also realized that the lava core wasn't here either. Great. How am I supposed to find it now? As I was leaving, I heard the sound of crying. Who is that? I made my way through some leaves and found a baby kangaroo in a clearing, scared. You aren't gonna hurt me like the other penguin hurt my father, are you? What? No, of course not. My entire family's gone, mister. I have nowhere to go. No one to depend on. I don't know what to do. You can come with me. I promise. I'm gonna keep you safe. What's your name? Thank you, sir. My name is Hop. Hop and I eventually made it back to my home. We walked over and saw Bulk was standing there waiting for us. Hey, Fozo, while you were gone, I made us a huge operational fishing farm. Doesn't get more legit than this. It looks great. Thank you. I brought Hop over to an area in our valley and made him a small home, one similar to his previous one. I made sure to make it out of cobblestone so he couldn't burn it down. Here you go, Hop. I promise I'll do everything in my power to keep you safe. Gee, thanks, mister. You know, I was told to keep this safe, but I think you should have it. Hop then threw me over the second lava core. Wait, you've had this all along? He explained to me that he was the one who was meant to hide it from King Mordecai, just in case things went south. Well, thank you. You have no idea how much this helps. I quickly absorbed it and gained five more hearts. My skin also completely changed. You know, my father always would go on these quests to Mount Firestone. Many fire animals know of its existence. Maybe that could be a good place to check out. Thanks, Hop. I think I will. On day 17 to 18, I was on the way towards Mount Firestone. I managed to find some iron while traveling. With Lavi's help, I quickly smelted it and made myself an iron helmet. After, I kept on walking until until I reached Mount Firestone's entrance. I wanted to go inside, but I was stopped by a guard. Halt! None shall be granted passageway! What? Come on, there has to be some way I can get inside. I really need to. Well, you know, I am pretty hungry, and some juicy figs would sound amazing right now. If you get me some, uh, who knows? Maybe I'll go on break, leaving the entrance unguarded. Say no more. Where can I find the nearest fig tree? On days 19 to 20, I was off searching for a large tree. Big trees in these areas are a lot larger than regular trees, so look out for that. As I was walking, I finally reached a tree that seemed to be 30 blocks tall. Jeez, how am I supposed to get up there? I guess I'm gonna have to climb. I got some blocks and started building up right next to it. Because I was made out of lava, though, the giant tree started to burn. Oh, no. Come on, go out. I tried my best, but the tree just kept burning. Because of it, I fell all the way to the ground. Ow! Hey, idiot! You realize this is my home, right? Look, I'm sorry. I was just looking for some figs. Figs, huh? Let's say we make a deal. This was my home, but the climate here is always too cold for me. And you kind of burnt it down. But if you find me a nice area of heat, I will give you all the figs you need. Okay, you angry squirrel. You've got yourself a deal. I then went around and collected as many resources as I could. Afterwards, I found a nice place to set him up a little camp area. Using my lava, I made him a toasty fireplace as well. All right, pal. A deal's a deal. This place is great. Here you go. Thanks. I grabbed them and then made my way back towards the guard. On days 21 to 23, I reached the guard and gave him his precious figs. Yeah, this'll do. Go on in. As soon as I stepped in, the skies turned a lot more smoky, and I couldn't see 20 feet in front of me. I don't even know where I'm going. I can help you with that. Lavi flew out and started to fly around in a circle faster and faster. Uh, what are you doing? She kept going until something started to happen. In the blink of an eye, all of the smoke suddenly disappeared, revealing Mount Firestone in front of us. Whoa. Thanks, Lavi. I walked up a long staircase that led up to the top. Man, once I reached it, I came across a large room. There was fire everywhere, but surprisingly, things seemed peaceful. Ah, uh, your dad would have loved it here. Yeah, my dad seemed like he was awesome. He was. He wanted to make sure I would do anything in my power to aid you in your quest. 
He really did believe in you, Fozo. Well, let's hope I don't let him down. I then looked over and saw what looked to be a closed journal. Inside of it had information on another lava core. The next one is located in a tundra? Interesting. The kangaroos must have been planning to take this one too. I need to get there before anyone else takes them. As I was leaving, I ran into a chest that had an iron chest blade inside. Perfect. I quickly grabbed the materials and headed off. On the way to the next lava core, I quickly stopped at my base. I looked around and noticed some villagers were roaming. What the? What are you guys doing here? Sir, lava penguin, sir! Please, help us! Our home has been taken over by those ice villain freaks! We have nowhere left to go! I looked over at the rest of his family. Man, they really need my help. I went off and gathered enough materials to quickly make them a few houses to stay in. I wanted them to feel just at home, so I made it nearly identical to their villages. In return, they helped by creating a couple farms throughout the base. We promise we will work to make sure your home always has food. Thanks, guys. Hey, leave me alone. Hey, what's going on? I went over only to see Bulk being bullied by three cats. Hey, mister, you lied to me. You ain't ever faced 50 iron golems. Wow, so this guy is just all talk, isn't he? Uh... Alright, that's it. I used my lava powers, and the cats quickly left. Are you okay, Bulk? Yeah, thanks. I just hope someday I can do more than, uh, talk. Bulk walked away, sad. I'm sorry, buddy. Your time will come someday. I know it. On days 27 to 29, I made it to the tundra. If I were a lava core, where would I be? Let us go! Please! Who is that? I made my way over and found a small prison camp that was holding penguins? Never! Those who disagree with our king will be nothing but prisoners. Not if I have anything to say about it. I quickly went in, catching the frozen blazes off guard. Using my lava axe, I was able to easily take them out. A lava penguin? Your brother has gotten out of control. Anyone who doesn't agree with him gets thrown in these types of camps. I then went over to their ice cages and used my lava powers to destroy them. Don't worry, everyone. I plan to stop my brother once I'm stronger. But for now, you guys need to stay at my base for your own protection. Your father was right all along. Even though you are lava, you are the true leader of the penguins. On days 30 to 32, the map led to nowhere? I looked around and was in the middle of an ice lake. So what? Is this map a fake or something? Suddenly, the ground below me started to glow. It's below me? Using my lava axe, I was slowly but surely melting the ice by attacking it layer by layer. Is it getting colder in here or is it just me? After some time, I broke the last layer. Ouch. Where am I? Beside me, I noticed a wall that seemed to have a pattern of ice blocks to it. Great, more ice. I tried to use my lava shot to melt the ice one by one, but they kept freezing over again. How am I supposed to get past this? Hey, Dum Dum, have you ever seen a puzzle? This is like perfect. How so? You are made out of lava. I'm melting it all at once. Right. I walked over and used my lava axe, which made all the ice melt at once. In the same instant, the wall vanished, leading to a doorway. On the other side of it lied the third lava core. I grabbed it, making me glow even brighter. I even gained five hearts and was granted a lava cannon? Awesome! I quickly made it out of the lava core room, but as soon as I stepped foot outside, I heard a loud rumble coming from the prison area. I ran over, only to see my brother standing there with his frozen army. Where are my penguins? Sir, I, I promise, I don't know. It was my brother. I know it was. You will pay for his actions. He was about to kill the blaze. Hey, you want to attack someone? Attack me. Brother. We finally meet again. Mordecai, stop this. This isn't what dad would have wanted. Look around you. What you're doing is wrong. You really think I would let you trick me? I know you are trying to get stronger to take my kingdom. Well, I am the rightful ruler, the oldest son. The kingdom is mine. All I'm trying to do is make things right. My brother didn't listen though and started to rush at me and attack. I thought having three lava cores would make me much stronger, but it seems as though my brother has gotten stronger too. I was getting weak 
and fast. I used my new lava cannon on him, which stunned him. While stunned, I then melted the ice right beneath him, giving me enough time to run away. On days 36 to 38, I returned home only to see the penguins wandering around. This area is way too hot for us. We need the cold. Right. I upgraded my house, then did my best to go around and make them houses that would best suit them. But after a while, the snow would just start to melt away? How am I supposed to keep these guys cold while keeping myself hot? Pozo, there's one thing in this world that might solve this problem. The ice beacon. The elder told me the penguins have never used an ice beacon before, but it has been said that it can keep anything cold within any radius it is placed. So, if I find in this ice beacon, I solve the cooling problem. The beacon is located in the Winter's Gorge, said to be guarded by the most fierce beast there is. Be fast. I'm not sure if us penguins can survive in this heat for so long. If it was guarded by a monster, I knew I would need an extra set of hands. Hey, Bulk, do you want to come with me? Oh, do I ever. Let's go, penguin adventure awaits. On days 39 to 41, Bulk and I made it to Winter's Gorge. Even though it was freezing, this place was beautiful. But I wonder where the beacon is. Yo, Fozo, see that mountain there? Yeah, I do. Why? Big tall mountain, huge fort on tall mountain, beacon light from huge fort. Do I need to say anything more? Okay, maybe you have a point. Bulk and I made our way up the mountain and I reached the fort's entrance. As we were walking in, we can see the ice beacon lying on the other side. Okay, let's be careful, Bulk. We don't know where the scary guardian can- Look, Bozo! The beacon's right there! B. Suddenly, the entire area began to rumble. We ventured further into the temple and came face to face with a giant ice yeti. Both Bulk and I knew the only way out of this was to fight. We both charged in and started to attack him with everything we had. With one major hit, though, he hit us away. Ah! Stop, stop! Jeez, look at you guys. I can tell you aren't fun at parties. Sheesh! Uh, wait, I'm so confused. You are the guardian who guards the ice beacon, right? Yeah, but I also have emotions and feelings, you psycho. Anyways, so you're after the ice beacon, huh? Well, what if I told you I have a problem of my own? Will you solve it for me? You can have your beacon. Okay, what is it? There's a little snow fort that just got built up down the other side of this mountain. They will not shut up during the night. And for goodness sakes, I need my beauty sleep. Shut them up and you can have your ice beacon. Agreed. Bulk, stay here and keep our new friend company. I will be right back. On days 42 to 44, I made my way down the mountain. Just like the Yeti said, there was a new fort. It seemed to be a whole mining operation. As I got closer, I was able to see that it was occupied by a bunch of ice goblins. Let's go, people! This ore isn't going to mine itself. Gotta keep King Mordecai happy now, or else we're done for! Great. Looks like my brother's army just keeps growing. You know, maybe they're peaceful. Lava Penguin! Attack him! Kill! I guess not! I charged him and started to attack the ice goblins one by one. Using my new lava axe helped me out a lot, but these goblins were still very strong. Out of instinct, I jumped in the air and did a lava slam larger than any I've ever done before. It took down all of them at once. Whoa, how did I do that? I then looked over to a nearby tent and spotted a weird looking block placed in the center of it. There were notes next to it saying that this could lead to the next lava core. I better grab it. I did and made my way out of the camp. There I was in front of 10,000 ender dragons. All right, all right, that's enough out of you. I quickly told the Yeti that the job was done and filled with gratitude, he sent us to the ice beacon saying, just take care of it, all right? It's very delicate. We made it back home on days 45 to 47. I looked over and can tell that the penguins were starting to look really weak. Knowing this, I quickly got to work building an area for the ice beacon. Once I placed it, a huge ice wave got sent out, freezing over the penguins' homes. Ice and lava coexisting right next to each other? Man, who would have thought? This is what I meant, Fozo. Being made out of lava won't stop you from leading your people the way your father would have wanted. Yeah, but a king? I don't know. I then walked over to my home and placed down the block I got from the mining camp. 
how are you supposed to lead me to the next core? I try to read it, but I didn't understand the language carved onto it. It's because only a few can. What do you mean? This right here is the language of the skull, a very ancient group. The only way you can find them is if they find you first. Well, there has to be a way we can find them. Let me see what I can do, Fozo, but it will take time. We don't have that much time, though. Suddenly, I heard blasts going on right outside of my home. What can that be? I ran outside, only to see three frozen blazes off in the distance. Run for it! We must tell King Mordecai what we have found! If I let them reach my brother, everything I've worked for is done. I quickly started to run and chase after them. They were fast and tried to lose me in the trees. Since they could fly, I had a really hard time keeping up. I lost them, but knew I had to keep searching. The sun was going down, and I felt like all hope was lost when I suddenly saw smoke in the sky. What the? I ran over the hill and saw the three frozen blazes. From the looks of things, they set up a small camp on the way to the Ice Kingdom. I did my best to sneak up on them, and when they weren't expecting it, I used my lava axe to instantly take down two of them. I must retreat! The third one started to run, and I chased after him. I quickly noticed that he got affected by my attack because he was moving at a much lower pace. I finally caught up and took him down. You have no idea what the king has planned. What did he mean by that? Out of nowhere though, I heard the sound of a loud blast and knew something big was going on. On days 51 to 53, I arrived at the Penguin's Kingdom, but it looked much worse than when I was first there. Everything seemed so cold. I looked over and noticed my brother talking down to his men. Do you see this? Once at full power, I can convert any biome into a cold tundra with just one spell. Oh no, that doesn't sound good at all. Mordecai, stop this. Oh, Fozo. When will you learn what is coming for this world is inevitable? The kingdom of the penguins shall rise! Penguins are known for their peaceful ways, Mordecai. This isn't right. No, what isn't right is that dad chose you for this role. A lava penguin, please. When I turn every biome into a snowy tundra, no one will even know what lava is. Mordecai then shot an ice blast at me. But luckily, I was able to dodge it. We started to fight, but because of Mordecai's size, I was severely overwhelmed. Brother, stop. He didn't listen though and I was starting to pass out. Uh, while my vision was blurry, I could see someone else appear and fight off my brother. Who is that? On days 54 to 56, I slowly woke up. Ah, my head. Am I in some sort of camp? Is he dead? How can he be dead, you idiot? He is clearly talking. Ah! Ah! Where am I? I slowly looked over and saw a golden mask staring back at me. Hello, Lava Penguin. We are the Skull. The Scald? But how did you- That is not important. What is, is your brother. He is still out at large. And with his plan to ice over the world, it seems as if you are the only hope to solve this and bring balance to the world. Look, I'm trying, okay, but Mordecai, he seems to be one step ahead of me all the time. The Scald King asked if he could take a look at the block I'd possessed. I placed it down in the middle of the room, and they all began to inspect it. Interesting. I can't read! Ah, yes. I know where you must place this block for your next lava core. But if you want to see, you must have a special item. The Scald King tossed me over a map and a mask. What am I supposed to do with this? Wear this mask. Once you're at the location, then all shall be answered. Because of my new mask, it reminded me I needed to upgrade the rest of my gear. While on my way towards the location, I found a nice cave. Inside, I was able to find some diamond ore. With it, I made a full set of diamond armor. Now, hopefully, I could put up a better fight against my brother. I left the cave and reached the location the Scald told me about. It was a vast mountain range. Okay, so now what? Where am I supposed to go? Wait, the mask. 
I put it on, and suddenly, I felt drawn towards the top of the nearby mountain. As I got closer to the top, I saw a highlighted pillar there, waiting for me. Could it be that easy? I placed the block on the pillar, and out of nowhere, far below, the mountain opened up a passageway to a deep lava pit. So, I'm guessing it's in there. On day 60 to 62, I went inside of the lava pit. I was swimming through the lava until I fell down a huge hole that led me to a strange underground lava cave. Uh, where am I? I heard movement going on throughout the lake, as if someone were swimming in it. This isn't scary at all. Uh, hello? Is anyone there? Suddenly, a giant lava eel appeared from the lava pool. Oh, goodness. I'm guessing you aren't friendly. The lava eel started to attack me, shooting out various lava blasts. I used every attack that I could on him. I can tell that it was greatly weakening him. Out of nowhere, though, his attack hit me, which sent me flying into the lava lake. Okay. Bozo, uh, stay calm. Once the eel got close enough, I was able to use my sword on him and defeat him. Sweet. I came out of the lava, and on the outside of it, the lava core was there waiting for me, which gave me another five hearts. And from the looks of things, I now had a set of lava elytra wings. A penguin? that could fly? Interesting. On day 63 to 65, I managed to make my way out of the pit, and what was waiting on the other side was much worse. As I left the mountain, I looked over and saw a crowd of penguins standing on the edge of a lava pool. All penguins here must jump in the lava for their lack of appreciation of their new kingdom. Wait, no, please, ah! Who's next? Oh no, I have to save them. Okay, new wings. Here goes nothing. I used my newly acquired elytra wings and was able to get to them extremely fast. I reached them and immediately pushed the ice goblin into the lava lake. Ah! The other ice goblins all started to attack me. But thanks to my lava axe, let's just say they didn't stand a chance. So, the rumors are true. The lava penguin is still out there. We are saved. On day 66 to 68, I arrived back at my base with a new crowd of penguins. Since there were a lot more this time around, I knew that I needed to build up more homes. I went to work and made a lot more igloos surrounding the area. Thank you, Fauzo. Your father would be so proud of you. Yeah, all hail our new king. Your king? I don't know if I... Do you see now, Fozo? Since you were a baby, every moment has led up to this. You are the rightful king. Now it's time to lead your people and save the rest. You know, as scared as I was, maybe Lavi was right. It's time I took this responsibility. I went over to my house and knew what I had to do. It took some time, but I was able to turn my once house into a small but functioning castle. I looked down at my penguin people and a sense of pride filled within me. Help! Help! What the? Are you okay? Do I look okay? No, our entire village was just turned into a freezer with the use of a special stupid wand. My brother. Yeah, he is absolute bananas. Listen, Lava Penguin, we have all been rooting for you in countless villages. I actually knew of a trader that came in town once, and he said that he may know where that last lava core is that you're looking for. It's inside of an underwater lava temple. Really? An underwater lava temple? Okay, I'm gonna need to know exactly where that trader went. On day 69 to 71, I started my search for the trader. From the sound of things, this guy travels all throughout Minecraft, so finding him was gonna be a challenge, but apparently he will be at a neighboring village for a few hours. I have to get there before he leaves. If you find the trader, he possesses a compass that shall show you the passageway. As I was exploring, I heard loud footsteps from behind me. Wait, bulk? Hey, buddy, you really think I'm gonna just let you go on this adventure by yourself? Come on. You're right. Sometimes I forget myself that I need the backup. Thanks. As we were both walking, we stumbled across something I had never seen before. Is that? It looks like a giant trail of ice. I'm guessing from your loving brother. Bulk seems to be right, Fozo. At this rate, if your brother fully utilizes his staff, no one is going to survive. 
On day 72 to 74, Bulk and I were following the trail when suddenly it ended. I looked up and saw a village off in the distance. There it is. The trader should be there. Suddenly, we heard a loud crash and all I could see in the distance was a bright blue light. Uh, that can't be good. Come on. Bulk and I went over to see what was going on and came to the realization that my brother and his troops were in our way. Oh, brother, do you like how much I have grown in my strength? At this point, no one could stop me, not even you. Get ready, Bulk. We're gonna have to fight our way through this one. Are you crazy? That's nonsense. I'll keep them busy. You need to find that trader to get that compass. What? No way. I'm not just gonna leave you. That wasn't a question. If you don't find that compass, all hope is lost. Let me have this, Bozo. Let me have this story. I, I don't know what to say. Don't say anything. Just go now. I did as Bulk told me and snuck my way around while he kept them busy. All right, Bulk. So there I was in front of Winter himself. Charge! Charge! On days 75 to 77, I hurried through the village. I could hear sounds of battle going off in the distance. Where are you, traitor? Come on, come on. I burst through one of the houses, and the traitor was there waiting. Boy, am I happy to see you. I thought I was done for. Your villager friends told me about you. They said you may know something about- The final lava core? Why, yes. While traveling, I think I may have found something for you. The traitor then handed me over a compass. This will lead me to the temple? Yes, and apparently what's waiting there shall grant you enough power to stop all of this. Or at least, I hope. Good luck, Lava Penguin. No matter what, just don't get caught by your brother. I won't. Stay safe, traitor. I then left the house and looked off in the distance and saw Mordecai and his men standing there with no bulk to be found. I'm so sorry. I promise I'm going to make things right. I returned to base on day 78 to 80. I looked around and all the penguins looked like they were a lot happier here, weirdly enough. They weren't too angry, too sad. They were... Valid. Bozo, balanced. I went over to Bulk's cave, and inside of it, I made him a memorial area. Don't worry, buddy. I'll make sure the whole world knows your story. You are a hero, and nothing less. I walked out to see the penguins all staring at me. Our king, what now? It is time that I find the last lava core and end this. Not just for the penguins, but for everyone. My father believed in peace and harmony, and I will do whatever I can to bring that belief back into all of our lives. On days 81 to 85, I made my way towards the underwater temple. Underwater, huh? From the looks of things, everything was frozen over. I kept walking until the compass started to go crazy. Am I here? I must be. I started mining straight below me. It took a while, but eventually I found myself at the main entryway of the temple. I walked inside and the atmosphere completely changed. It was no longer cold, but instead it was one of the hottest places I've ever stepped foot into. I walked further inside when I came across a large room. In front of me was the final lava core, but on the other side of that... Dad, is that you? My son, how much you have grown. Dad, Mordecai, he's gotten strong and, and, and is just lost. He's filled with so much rage. He is lost, son. He uses his rage to fuel him instead of his wisdom. The perfect reason why I thought you would be suitable for king. How? How do I stop him? Suddenly, the lava core vanished. And in the blink of an eye, I grew fully in size and gained five more hearts. And what's this? A staff? The answer has been in front of you this whole time balance. That's how I stop him? You will figure that out soon enough. Keep doing what you're doing, son. Keep making me proud and be the king our people deserve. In a flash, my father disappeared. I promise, dad, I will. While I was making my way back home, something strange happened. Everything around me turned into snow. What the? How? That's when I saw the beam shooting from the sky. Oh no, his staff is ready. I quickly ran over to check, and my brother was using his staff to turn multiple biomes into a winter storm. Mordecai, stop! Brother? Oh my. Looks like you've gotten stronger too. Want to find out who the strongest is? Mordecai then started shooting his staff at me. Each blast took away a lot of my heart. Ah! I tried to fire my lava staff at him, but I wasn't able to control it. Ah! 
stupid staff! We must make mine stronger! I promise. Before you know it, this world shall be covered in ice! Lava will cease to exist! You will cease to exist! Mordecai left. I thought I was supposed to be strong enough to stop him now. On days 91 and 94, I returned back to base, feeling defeated. How am I supposed to stop him? Every time I think I'm finally ready, he's always another step ahead of me! Ozo, what did your father just tell you, dummy? I must fight with balance, but how? I thought I was. Yeah, but you're so focused on being a step ahead of your brother. Maybe you guys were always meant to finish this on the same step. My lava staff? His ice staff? Maybe the perfect blend of the two will restore everything back to the way it was. And when that is, I can stop my brother. He won't be as powerful. That's it. I know what I have to do. I looked at my people. Everyone. All hope isn't lost just yet. I promise. I will go and make things right. And I won't come back until everything is the way that it should be. On days 95 to 99, I've reached my brother's kingdom. My goodness, what have you done to this place? I looked over and saw a line of frozen blazes and ice goblins that were guarding the main castle. Right over them, my brother was there waiting. I see you are back, brother. Yeah, I'm here to finish this. You will soon learn to regret that decision. Guards, attack! I watched as my brother went back into his castle and all of the blazes and goblins started to attack me. I took them down one by one. Thanks to my upgrades, these guys were nothing. While fighting, I looked up and noticed a beam was being pointed straight into the sky. No, is my brother trying to ice over the entire world? I have to hurry. Out of pure instinct, I pulled out my staff and exploded a huge section of the frozen blazes. Whoa, they were all defeated. Now all that's left is me and you, brother. On day 100, I reached the throne room where my brother was waiting. Back here. Where it all started. Where you wrongfully took the throne. This ends today. Give me your best shot. Mordecai charged at me and shot various ice attacks. He tried to freeze me in place. Stop this. Never. This is my throne. He then stood away from me and started to shoot his staff into the sky. Once complete, this world will be nothing but a tundra. Say goodbye to the heat brother no it's time i pulled out my staff and as my brother's was going off i shot mine directly onto his laser the entire room began to rumble and suddenly everything went white uh what happened i looked over and my brother was hurt i just wanted to be king Mordecai died right in front of me i'm sorry but now it's time to run this kingdom the way it should be